Of all the songs in halls of lore, there echoes none more grand than Olain's many feats of might, the pure and lady of the light. She is a knight of golden knot. She is the cure seeker, the conscience of the summer fay. She is the heart of spring, of day.
Everyone just stand back. The warden can't work when you're crowding so close. Go back to your business. Go on. Masaru, have mercy. Keep moving. This business doesn't concern you. Unless you're an expert scholar on the Fae, I'd suggest you move along. No reason to be out in the open with the Red Legion about. Ugh. What are they? I'm not sure, but they've been here for longer than any of us can imagine. They're older than the trees. They have to be. They grew them. Humans and immortals cannot live together in peace. At least not forever. The peace we have with the Summer Court is unnatural. That's my opinion. You might call it a Fey Nation. One of two united factions that rule their kind. The Summer Court are not exactly allies, but they do let us be most of the time. It's the other Fey, the Winter Court, that has spawned the dreaded Tuatha. A vicious clan of killers who wish to defeat and enslave all mortals. Are you playing a trick on me? I would hope so. We're going on ten years of the mortals and the Tuatha locked in a deadly embrace. Normally I'd decry the bloodshed, but this is a conflict that we cannot afford to lose. Bandits. But no ordinary bandits. Surely you've heard of Red the Dead Edward. They say he drinks the blood of his captives, that he consumes their souls. Or perhaps those are just rumors. You should be fine if you stay inside the village. Once you go beyond the boundaries of Gorhart, however, your life is in your hands. Oh. I'd never seen one of them until a day or so ago. It appears that a small group of warriors uh, ventured inland to strike behind our lines. Believe the stories, friend. The Tuatha were mad. They have been touched uh, by a dark magic. They are wholly corrupted, and they are the enemy. I don't know if you noticed, but St. Odwig's mission closed its gate moments before that Fae's body turned up on the road. I don't like what that suggests. Not at all. The brothers of St. Odwigs are an odd sort, scurrying back and forth across the mission like squirrels gathering nuts. I wonder what goes on behind those closed doors. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You there, do you feel nauseous, itchy? Have you noticed any blood leaking from your eye sockets? I've been noticing the symptoms everywhere. No, this situation could not be any worse. If the Red Legion is involved, then we could all be staring death in the face. What have I done? Why ask questions when you could never understand the answers? It's clear your prowess is not with wit, but with a weapon. If you must know, something of value has been stolen. An alchemical formula that, if released, could cause untold devastation. I see its symptoms everywhere. Only my apprentice, Karth, and I knew of my work on the formula, but he's gone missing as well. It was an early version, unstable and rife with potential dangers. My hope is to develop a weapon that the Alphar can bring against our common enemy, the Tuatha. To say more would be to reveal my secrets. All I can say is that it involves lesions, goiters, and a good deal of pus. His name was Karth Hilfred. I found him one morning outside my door, picking through the ember eyes. I was impressed how well he knew his way around a plant. I've never seen one so eager to learn. I do not deserve such good will after what I've engineered. If disaster occurs in Odorath, it will be on my head. I'm not sure where Karth may have gone, but I knew that before he came to me, he found shelter in the ancient chambers of Agnur Far Hall, an Irathi ruin east of Gorhart. Once you've ensured Karth's safety, you must learn what's happened to my formula. When you do, destroy it. It's the only way to keep us safe. He always spoke of his time as a wastrel living in the abandoned halls of Agnor Farhall, the Arathi ruin. People say it's haunted. 
but people see many things. The villagers believe it's haunted, but I have a feeling that's a ruse devised by the Red Legion. They mean to terrorize these people into submission, and it's working. Haven't you seen it? The grim tower to the west. Avoid its shadow if you can, because what transpires inside Alistar will benefit no one. I would know. I have seen many conflicts unfold, but never have I seen one in which the fates of so many are at stake. The Tuatha will not settle for simple victory. They want total domination and will do whatever it takes to achieve it. For years I dabbled in alchemy, healing, divination and transmutation. All of that seems frivolous now, what with the war looming over us. Now I spend my sleepless nights in search of a formula that will end such conflicts forever. I fear for his life. Karth was gifted in a way that I've witnessed in only a select few. If the Red Legion has him, there's no telling of how he'll be treated. If you must know, my name is Nani Hanri, formerly the Chief Alchemist of Alistar. But you wouldn't know what that is, would you? When the scholars in the tower ordered me to leave the grounds, I took refuge here. The Almain are a private people, keen to keep to themselves, like me. Bandits, ruthless and well organized, the Red Legion is reaping many rewards by preying on vulnerable Almain settlers traveling east. Long ago, these villains confined themselves to the coast, but recently they've moved inland to avoid the war. Now they're our problem. They are the undying, the corrupted roots. Their existence is an abomination. Everything in Amalur exists for a particular reason, except for the Tuatha. They're not meant to be. Goodbye.
Dida Eolfred has a nice smile. She also has some of the best prices this far west. Time is of the essence. That's never been more true.
share well.
Time is of the essence. That's never been more true. Goodbye. Can't talk. Herc doesn't like loafers. I don't care what you race. It's a tragedy whenever anyone's savage like this. Just look at the poor creature. She's been beaten to the brink of death. The Fae may be strange, but they certainly don't deserve this. It appears she was attacked with some manner of short blade. Likely a dagger, although there's no way I can be sure. People simply stood by as she called for help. No one lifted a finger. Can you imagine? It's shameful to treat another in such a way, even if she is a fae. I don't know whether we possess the knowledge to treat such a wound. Frankly, I don't even know if I could save a mortal with such grievous wounds. It's difficult to say. We've been plagued by the Red Legion for days, but it's not their way to go after the fae in the area. They like their targets mortal. In case you haven't heard, there have been some Tuatha sighting in the woods to the west, so that's also a possibility. It's unlikely, though. Oh. Well, you're the only one. With all the troubles we've suffered in this village, people are weary of adversity. They'd rather just ignore it. I'm going to suggest something a bit... Uh, untraditional. There's a fae named Eri. She spends her days up on the hill overlooking the village. Seek her wisdom. I would do it, but... I'm a coward. That's the truth. Perhaps a Fey will know how to heal a Fey. If not, then we're back where we started. She spends her days in the precipice overlooking the village. She doesn't think we're aware of her presence, but we most certainly are. Peaceful Fey make up the tribe known as the Court of Summer. They are led by a king in a faraway city, hidden from mortal eyes. That's about all I know. Little more than rumors and stories from my youth. Our fate rests in the hands of a few chosen who fight in the east. You wouldn't even know it in Gorhart. We're miles away from the smoke and the screams. I've spent most of my life dealing with them, but they aren't like us. Not at the core. They don't know what it means to be a man who sweats to feed his family. Gorhart has become a sort of refuge for those settlers who wish to live a life free of Fey. I don't see that lasting. Not with the war. Not with everything changing. We keep a precarious peace with the Court of Summer, one that's tested every day. I lie awake at night worrying what kind of disaster awaits me in the morning. But we're a good community full of good people. We have our eccentrics, sure, but we work hard and live quietly. That's the best anyone can do these days. I'm the Warden of Gorhart, and a poor one at that. I've been back from the war for only six months and been warden for less than two. Now here I am with an injured fay on my doorstep. I'm a disgrace. I've seen many bandit clans in the Crystal War and back home. But these men are a particular breed. 
They're like the victims weak and bloody. The Red Legion has been a presence in the area for several weeks now. Our people are scared to show their faces after dark. I don't know what the Tuatha would be doing this far from the front lines. It must be something vital to their interests. They're a wicked breed, though, and I pity the man who meets up with them in these darkened forests. Bye now. I thought about searching for treasure in that nearby Arathi ruin, Agnil Farhol, but they say it's overrun. Nothing to see back here. Just a man working for his pay. We in Gorhart like to stay focused on our business. That way the face stay focused on theirs.
I don't know if what the face say about these stones is true, but if it is, well, this is just too good to not save forever. Lystrom was out of town when Artol was visiting. Now, Lystrom doesn't know Artol, and Artol is older and strange. She could be mistaken for a fate weaver. So, when Lystrom came back to town, here was Artol the Oracular. I said to Lystrom, I hear her readings are amazing. You should go. Oh, my, you should have seen it. A rooster, she said, will change into a man, and this man will become your lover. He will provide for you, and he will make you laugh, and he will make your life exciting and easier. But, and this is something you can never forget, he must never eat chicken. <laughs> And once in a while, you will need to peck at things on the ground, and every morning at the break of dawn, you'll hear a loud cry from him. <laughs> What are you doing down here? Don't you know Agna Farhol is haunted by the spirits of the Arathi? So? Are you foolish or just stupid? Oh, I see. The Twisted Gnome has found herself a champion. How delightful. Nanny always was a fool. So immersed in her work that she failed to see the deception before her very eyes. The Red Legion has her formula, because I gave it to them. At this very moment, they are moving crates of it eastward towards the city of Rathir, where they will fetch a high price. Poor Nanny. So trusting, so pathetic. Of course she can never learn of my ruse, can she? It is time. <laughs>
Sometimes this is too hard to believe. But you can accept the strangest fact that you were wrong. Yes, but that and this endless vacuity is horrible. The Ancient Ones were here. They delivered themselves into the world. The time-worn cycle turns with ages. The seasons drift along the stream. They wait for the past. The future brings the forming storm. This is no place for a home, for anyone.
Throughout the town they stood in fear of the brilliant fighter near. Oh, 
Need supplies? Try the corner shop. Everyone in Gorhart is talking about the attacks. They say that the Red Legion is receding back into the shadows from whence they came. It is all thanks to you. You found the formula and destroyed it. Now, you may think you understand the impact of this act, but you truly do not. You are a friend to this village and to me, Nanny Hanri. Take this. It is not much, but it gives you an idea of my gratitude. Farewell.